Hi, this is Steve Rotherick from Marillion. We have a new album coming out, Fear. Fuck everyone and run. Check it out. It's something very special. I remember the enchanted English world garden. Well, although it, it's been sort of three years, um, in, in, in reality, we've probably spent about nine months on the, on the writing and recording of, of, of the new album. Uh, and in a lot of ways, it was easier than the sounds that Carlton made. Obviously, we had, we had problems after the initial uh, attempt at the writing of, of sounds that Carlton made, which meant that we had actually had a break for quite a while. Uh, but with this album, we, we just did a, uh, uh, the way that we write, really, for the last few albums, where we just jam around ideas, and Mike Hunter records them into uh, Pro Tools at a high bit rate and high resolution, and then bounces the best moments into audio files, which he posts up on our, our private SoundCloud account. So then we can all listen and comment on about these and, and choose our favourites. So once this process has gone on for several months, we, we finish up with a selection of music that we all like. So that makes the, the next process a little bit easier. We're not having to fight if, if somebody doesn't like a certain section. These are things that there's a consensus on. So then these become the building blocks for the songs. Uh, and, we, we, and the songs then kind of evolve in, in quite an organic way uh, over the next nine months in, in, in the cases of some of the things. Um, when there's part of the New Kings, it's from the initial jam three years ago that goes into another section that's where we've learned the chords and, and, and jammed it around a bit more and, and further developed it musically. That was from January of this year. So what you finish up with is almost like a patchwork of, of ideas from different times. Um, you know, there's, there's sections um, from the real world sessions, for example, there's parts of most of uh, White Paper, parts of Living, Living in Fear, parts of El Dorado, and the end piano section of The Leavers only really came together down at Real World. So it, uh, yeah, it's a strange way of working, but it, it's wor it worked very well. And a lot of, a lot of the credit has to go to Mike Hunter, our, our producer, who's kind of like our George Martin in a way, and uh, his tireless energy and enthusiasm um, has kind of made the end result possible. So you, we can say that, uh, we could say that Michael Hunter is the sixth member mm. of Oregon? I think definitely, yeah. I think because Mike's worked with us f for so many years and not only that, he's uh, mixed all the live recordings, uh, he mixed my solo album and helped me with some of the recording for that. So I think his understanding of the band has grown over the years and he's now reached that point where you know, he fully understands what makes us special and he's encouraged us to, you know, to, to do that, I think, on this album. And uh, he's embraced some of the ways that we kind of work. You know, I mean, a lot of the time, magical things will happen. Mark will maybe play a keyboard part and, and, and I'll play something that um, complements it or weaves around it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it's part of what makes it special that the, the musical chemistry is still so strong between the five of us. The gold stops us. Yeah, we, we worked there twice on the Sounds That Can't Be Made album and I, I worked there on my solo album. And it is, it's just a magical place, really. Um, the equipment is, is fantastic. It's the only studio I know of in the world where you have this huge control room that's designed to have the band set up and performing within the same space as the producer um, engineer is working. You know, normally you have an isolation room that you, and then the control room. So it's, it's, it's unlike any other studio in the world. And yeah, just amazing equipment, like £20,000 worth of vintage Neve mic preamps that the drum kits would be going through, for example. Um, so sonically, it's fantastic. The location is crazy. You know, you're there and it's surrounded by this sort of um, lake with swans swimming past the windows of the control room. And uh, yeah, just uh, quite a surreal experience. But. Um, but yeah, wonderful, a wonderful place. I'm sure we'll go back for, there for the next album as well. Jet engines and 
Do we found when we've uh, crowdfunded albums in the past, the, the most difficult part um, is the fulfillment, is the sending out people's albums and then maybe there's some problem, maybe like a, a um, part of the consignment or sack of albums got lost somewhere or stolen, who knows. So you know, dealing with those sort of problems, um, it takes a lot of time and energy and our choices were we could have done that I mean, and, and, and hired another premises to work in and hire maybe another two staff for six months uh, or pass that responsibility on to, on to pledge really because that's the only thing that's different doing it this way. Uh, I mean there was talk initially that pledge had their own database of music fans and maybe some of those would, would be interested but that hasn't really happened. So, but, but it's a fulfillment part. I mean, they have, they have offices around the world, so anyone that has a problem, you know, they will have a contact with Pledge, and it's not another 5,000 emails that Lucy has to answer. So uh, it made, made sense in this album. Well, whether or not we'll continue that relationship in the future, we haven't decided yet. With, you know, with, with every album, there's lessons to be learned about what went right and what went wrong. So uh, we will look at the situation in a few months' time and make a decision where we want to go in the future with it. Our wide eyes aren't naive. Just how the songs evolved, really. There was no thought of, let's make a prog album, let's make a concept album. I mean, you know, it's not really a concept album, but El Dorado and The New Kings have similar interlinked threads, if you like. Uh, you know, it's quite a dark album, uh, I think. A sense of, of menace and foreboding in the, in the, in the words. Um, but uh, yeah, with all our music, it's, it's just how it evolves. We, we have no preconceptions when we set out to write an album or record it. Uh, it just follows its own path, uh, and that's what it's done in this case. But uh, it seems to be a, a, an album that's particularly applicable to the times. You know, even though some of these words were written three, four years ago, you would think they were written you know, a couple of months ago with the, the way that they reflect the problems um, in the world, uh, problems in the UK uh, post-Brexit and what that means for, for our children and all future generations. Yeah, the migrant crisis and the disillusionment I think that C personally felt after the events of the Iraq war uh, and how he be became ashamed to, to, you know, from going from being uh, mildly patriotic, I think, to, to feeling ashamed to be British. Um, and then, yeah, just a, you know, again, similar to Gaza, the humanitarian crisis, uh, that the, uh, the situation in Syria has, has, has created for, for, the, uh, for the immigrants. Uh, it's such a complex, yeah, my personal feeling is there isn't an easy solution, uh, and the whole thing is a is a nightmare. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I think that the thing that he points out is that there's 200 uh, children uh, in the refugee camps in, in Calais without parents, uh, and you know why wouldn't the government let those, at least those children, into the country? You know, uh, it's very hard to. Uh, to justify the attitude of government, so, but it is such a complex situation that um, I personally don't don't you know don't feel qualified to uh, to comment on it. But I I completely understand his his perspective, and I, I agree with with nearly everything he says in his in, in his words uh, on this album. No, no. Again, it was written many years before the Brexit, so it's it's again it's this sort of Nostradamus-like uh, foretelling, really. Even down to the terms, the leavers and the remainers, which are now part of the vocabulary, uh, were, it were written many years ago, and, and and that's all about. It's about musicians, but it's also about the road crew and the strange existence you have, where uh, especially for the road crew, where you can only fun if you're if. If that's what you do, a, a technician on the road with bands, you have to be working all the time. So you have very little time at home to, to adjust to uh, any sort of normal existence and you, then you're back into this nomadic um, 
rock and roll circus, really. Uh, and that is a strange existence, both both for the crew and, and for the musicians. I mean, the constant traveling and living out of a suitcase uh, yeah, makes you, I think, slightly dysfunctional uh, as a human being. And, and uh, normal life, it takes some adjustment to get back to. We are the new kings. Uh, he's talking, um, well, he's talking about the new kings, he's talking about the new Russian billionaires. The obvious the people who seem to have inherited all that vast wealth when you know the, those the changes happened within the Soviet Union, uh, while not there with the inner circle of whatever part of the government was in, really in charge in those days. I don't know, but but yeah, how they have this incredible wealth and power these days, um, and how generally you know wealthy individuals and corporations exploit people and places uh, with no fear of the consequences. It's that, that arrogance, uh, uh, you know, and, the, and the, like the bankers, you know, these people who ran the banks and, and part of the cause of the financial crisis who then leave and, uh, you know, get a, a huge payoff and, you know, go off, get on with their lives and in the meantime the governments have to, have to rescue the banks before there's a financial meltdown and, and it's just a taxpayer that finishes up paying for these people's uh, greed and incompetence. Glowing happiness arrived the day. I think it's about changes in, in life uh, and how your perspective changes as you, as you get older um, and what it means to be uh, musician, uh, what it means to be at the, the centre of the stage all the time and maybe as you get older and, and that situation changes, it's about finding the wisdom to accept those changes. I think it's more concrete, I think you, you, know, you feel that across Europe now with the, 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 you know, the terrorist threat um, and how that's intertwined. Um, with the other situations, with the you know, with Syria and uh, and that terrible mess that's been created, um, so you yeah, know I think it's a very real situation. I mean, the the financial meltdown, the, the humanitarian crisis, it's it's all interlinked. I think that's what Steve's saying. No, not really, because unless we agreed with his viewpoint, we wouldn't. The song wouldn't exist as a Marillion song. It would be a Steve Hogarth solo song. It's it's a combination of uh, of uh, you know he calls this lyrically his protest album, um, and although you could you could say that it's political, you could also say that it, it's it's not so much preaching a viewpoint as shining a light on, on these uh, self-evident truths. Uh, about certain problems in the world, um, and I think, you know, we we wouldn't have a problem with that. It's not like he's preaching a, a, a certain point of view. I think that that is when it can you can get into dodgy ground with 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 music and politics. But uh, this is more from the outside, from the humanitarian long term kind of perspective. Night. Our boxes of noises, our boxes of light. We are yeah, Steve Morris and, and, and Brian May, it's uh, always, always great to see, see them. I haven't seen Brian for, uh, I don't know, nearly 30 years. So that was, it was really, really nice to see him again. Um, yeah, no, it was a great tour. The first show in Barcelona, a fantastic re reception. The first time we'd ever played the New Kings. You know, it had a standing ovation. Uh, we did quite a few shows with Foreigner across uh, Germany uh, and we had an amazing reception from, from, from the audience uh, and, and some fantastic reviews. In fact, maybe the reviews were a little bit too good, so maybe we won't be playing with Foreigner again, but <laughs> it was, nevertheless it was uh, yeah, a great experience. Well, we're going to be playing the New Kings. We're going to be playing a selection of the old songs, obviously. We're also going to try and play El Dorado and Living in Fear as well on the US tour. 
We saw the crash. Yeah, one night we're going to be playing Marillion.com. Uh, and there's a, there's a plan to try and play all the new album. Uh, we haven't decided yet, but we, we, that's, that's something we're going to look into when we get back and start rehearsals next, next uh, well, rehearsals for the convention next January. Okay, well, um, I'm uh, hoping to finish the, the live DVD from the Bush Hall. Uh, that we'll also have some clips from some of the, uh, the other shows uh, that were shot uh, in the Netherlands, in Paris and in, in Germany on the bonus disc. Uh, I'm playing a few shows, well, Pete's on holiday in January in, in Mauritius for a couple of weeks. Um, uh, I'm playing three shows in Germany, uh, one in Holland and four shows in the UK. Uh, and then maybe in February a couple of shows in Italy. Uh, but I'd love to come back to do another concert in Paris. That was, uh, that was one of my favourite of, of my solo shows. So if there's an opportunity at some point next year, I'll be back with my solo band. And do you have some, somewhere in the back of your mind uh, a new record ready? <sighs> kind of. There's, there's, there's a project that I, I've kind of got on, on the back burner, but um, there's also some other possible collaborations with other musicians and I need to see uh, the time scale that, that's, that those collaborations are going to take before I can commit to, to making a, another solo album. Tomorrow.